My friend Bob bought a 14 XX tank locomotive in kit form to run on a gauge one track. He made a good start, erected the frames, put the axle boxes in, axles and the wheels, but sadly time began to defeat him. At that stage I uh, volunteered to try and complete the build for him. I had built this sort of kit before and had a reasonable idea of what I was about to let myself in for. The kit is marketed as being suitable for beginners, but in my view I don't really accept that that is the case. I didn't really intend to make a video documenting the build, but as uh, time went on I took a few clips of various problems that I'd overcome and uh, as you can see I've decided to into a, a, a short video presentation. This is uh, just as it came out of the box. Notice, notice the massive misalignments of the connecting rods with the piston crossheads. Having now rebent the connecting rod to try and line up with the crosshead, I now discover that the connecting rod won't fit into the crosshead in any event because the slot in the crosshead is too narrow, which means I either have to file the end of the connecting rod down and make it a bit thinner or file out the slot in the crosshead. Take your choice. Uh, another uh, sort of constructional issue with this uh, kit locomotive I'm putting together for Bob. The cylinder, I've just uh, undone them and just rotating them uh, over to the uh, to the rear end because it's easier to work on them. Um, so you can see the end of the cylinders. Uh, obviously having moved it, the piston is not in the right end because I've actually pulled the cylinder along. Um, now there's a cover, a split cover, that goes across the ends of the uh, two, two cylinders. I did notice when I tested it on air that there was a little bit of a leak, but I wasn't um, surprised by that because I hadn't put any sealant on, as per the advice in the instructions, because potentially you may have to remove these covers a few times while you're sorting out the position of the uh, pistons and one thing and another. The covers, which are a sort of split affair, you can see that, um, and there they are, and they're held in place by a uh, sort of clamp. So the clamp just slips over the, uh, the split covers and is held in place by two bolts. Uh, a magnetic screwdriver, which um, screw into here and then clamp the two uh, two rectangular covers over the cylinders. And on the other side of the covers, you've got a couple of raised areas that uh, just sit in the cylinder. So it sort of goes like that, one on each side. Terrific. But the pole drilling here and here extends quite a long way out from the cylinder and the top and bottom of it, the long and the short is that the bottom of the cylinder cover barely, and I say barely, in fact I'm not sure it does, covers the port. And I think that's where the little leak was occurring. And the bottom line is, of course, that if I were to simply apply sealant to this cover, uh, there's, no, there's not enough room for the sealant. Effectively, this cover needs to be a 16th or 3 30 seconds deeper, so I've got some room to put the sealant around, around the bottom in this area. Or the top, I'm not sure where it's the top or the bottom, but anyway. Uh, it's actually the bottom. So these covers aren't going to work 
Now I think what I'm going to have to do is to make some new covers that are slightly deeper in the area of the bottom so that I can actually get some sealant all the way around all the way around the bore without blocking the, uh, the two ports. When I make an engine, I have to say, I, don't, uh, I make sure that the drilling of the uh, steam passages come out a little bit further into the cylinder and not quite so far into the, uh, into the face of the block. So I tend not to have this uh, problem. But anyway, we are where we are. So that's the task. Make two replacement covers. Whoopie do. Okay, I have machined up two additional cylinder covers for this uh, kit. I've machined them from the solid out of uh, 7 8 hex brass, whereas the as supplied ones are actually silver soldered together from a bit of square and a bit of round, but I've just machined from the solid and profiled to suit. Where um, more area was particularly required, in fact, is, is in this area here where I've left a bit of hex. And the reason for that is so that when I put the sealant on, the sealant doesn't hopefully end up getting squashed down the, um, the cylinder ports. That's the plan anyway. We wait to see. My new covers are in place. Thus and thus, with a bit of sealant under them, which I hope has not obstructed the bores. So uh, we'll wait for the sealant and give it a chance to cure, and then we'll uh, try matters just to see if uh, everything is sealed up correctly. First ever rotation of Bob's engine on compressed air. Still very tight. But grounds for limited optimism. And amazingly, we also have reverse. Sorry about the background noise, that's the compressor. Couldn't quite remember whether I tested the cylinder motion uh, to make sure it worked after I made the new end covers and sealed them in. And also um, I have actually fitted the axle pump. So I just need to make sure that goes around. Uh, fitting of the connecting rod, the axle pump, to the eccentric on the crank axle uh, proved to be uh, slightly problematic. Um, so today, what ought to be a simple job, but as usual isn't quite as simple as it might appear to be, there's some dummy uh, firebox extensions and things, uh, which look like this, but they have to go inside go inside the boiler uh, so only fair enough in the instructions there's a hole here that needs enlarging to pass over the lubricator and this uh, cut out probably needs some modification but a bit of a flying ointment in theory the plate is fixed by the two screws that hold the lubricator but of course there are no holes in this plate so somehow that's going to have to be lined up and holes put through so that that plate can be affixed and while we're on about things that needed changing um, one other thing I'd forgotten to mention previously I don't know if I covered it but two big slots have had to be filed in the frames here and here so the sole plate can sit down. Uh, 
there was a hole completely missing on the frames here which I think is something to do with the brake gear so I had to drill and tap that 10 BA and behind the driving wheels there's a slot which enables you to put the crosshead pin in and that slot has had to be enlarged uh, a fair bit to get the pin through because as it supplied it didn't work this uh, dummy firebox extension wherever it is um, fits inside the frames and is actually held by the two screws that attach the lubricator and as I said previously those holes are not pretty drilled the other issue is that there's a line of etchings for rivets to be pressed out well you better not do that because if you press those rivets out they will stick up this side which will prevent this plate from seating snugly on the back of the frames to be clear then the only line of rivets that should be pressed out are the ones along the bottom because if you press the rest this will not sit comfortably inside the frames with the lubricator against its back which is what the instructions say okay further fitting problems the union into the displacement lubricator actually fouls the front plate of the boiler between the two lines I've marked and prevents the boiler from now sitting in the frame so um, part of this has got to be filed away I've filed a small recess into the front of the uh, firebox plate which hopefully will now enable the boiler to sit over this union if it doesn't then um, if it doesn't fit then clearly I'm going to have to file this slot a little bit deeper right I think the boiler is in roughly the right place because it lines up with a, a slot on the frame here and also it's clear that this um, inlet pipe is supposed to slide over this spigot which implies that that spigot should actually pass through the smaller of these two holes but it won't because and you maybe can't see it on the uh, video I don't know but the bloody holes uh, simply don't line up so uh, a bit of drilling and filing required on the bottom of the smoke box Uh, I've also had to file a fair bit off of each side of this uh, boiler back plate because it simply would not fit between the frames. Okay, more trouble. Um, the level indicator pipe needed shortening, which is absolutely nothing. But the uh, this comes out the slot in the back head will not pass the gland nut on the axle pump so the boiler no longer with the axle pump in place the boiler no longer sits on the frames um, so what's got to be done now is to uh, increase the width of this slot if nothing else so that it'll go over the gland nut all I can say is thank goodness for Dremel the boiler is now once again sitting down properly on the frames this uh, water inlet pipe 
into the boiler clack is not completely lined up but it's not far off so I'll leave the fine alignment when I fit the o-ring to it and shove one into the other still to be done but without the sole plate the boiler is now sitting down oh hum I don't think anything on this locomotive actually fits first time around I've uh, a huge fight but managed now to get the boiler in which is the good news but the uh, the front plate of the cab doesn't pass over the firebox uh, cleading so needs to be filed out each side so that it will slide down all right <coughs> excuse me i've got the front cab plate to slide down over the firebox cleading each side but of course it doesn't go down far enough so that the holes in the cab side match up can't quite remember if I showed this before but this is the um, spigot that I made and, uh, and glued actually to the boiler cleaning over which the dome now fits fairly snugly and hopefully won't fall off as opposed to the uh, sort of 20 thou brass disc that was supplied with the kit which for the life of me I could not see holding the dome in place for very long This is the water pump assembly on the bench. These two pieces, this T, and this is the inlet pipe to the pump. These two pieces are supposed to get a couple together. I mean, look at the bleeding state of it. They're not the same size. The silver soldering is a complete and utter mess. And this, although it won't be under pressure, does need to be sealed or the pump will draw in air and won't frigging work. Absolutely disgraceful. This is a view inside what will be the left hand water tank of the 14 XX showing the um, hand pump arrangement. That's the hand pump, and that will be the hand pump lever that will temporarily uh, be inserted to work the pump. And uh, this is the delivery pipe, which will go to the check valve on the boiler. Um, that pipe will connect to this one, and. Uh, this is the check valve into the boiler and that's the union into the boiler. As I've come to expect there are some issues with the operation of uh, the hand pump. In theory the slotted end of the, of the lever according to the instructions is supposed to fit into the slotted end of the uh, of the lever that operates the ram. Unfortunately of course it won't because if it fouls the the linkage and actually does nothing whatsoever. So what you have to do or what will have to be done is the lever when it's in use will have to be put in in effect upside down with the slotty bit at the other end. You just can't do what it says in the instructions. So that's the way to do that. Another potential issue in my view with the water pump assembly this is the captive which holds the uh, non-return valve into the bottom of the pump water is actually drawn up and into the body and then discharges out of the top fine no real issue with that but 
the distance from here to the bottom of the tank is, is quite substantial and um, effectively therefore the, the pump won't pick up until the water level presumably is up here somewhere which is uh, a considerable loss of capacity so I think what I'm going to have to do is to uh, attach something to extend the bottom of the water pump pickup um, rather nearer to what will be the bottom of the tank so that the last uh, quarter of an inch or so, uh, maybe a bit more than that really, a quarter of an inch or so of level, water level, will actually become usable because there isn't very much capacity in this tank at all, especially with all this lot in place. Um, and that I think will give a useful gain. That's another task. Things are just temporarily propped up at the moment on the sole plate. There's no uh, bolts in place. But an issue I forgot to mention with this hand pump is that there is a tank top bracket here which has, if you can just about see them, triangular reinforcing pieces in theory. Both sides they were. Uh, the only slight issue, of course, was that the triangular reinforcing uh, piece on this side got in the way of the pump handle when you use it, which effectively meant that the pump travel with the handle was going to be the square root of bugger all. So what I've had to do is to uh, move the triangular reinforcing part yeah, it kind of looks like this bit, but was on the other side, and completely move it out of the way by, uh, in fact, I just bent it back and filed it flat, um, so that this can actually uh, pass under this bracket to give a bit more usable pump ram travel. That's the pump ram there, a bit more pump ram travel. Oh, hum. This is the left hand cab side and uh, if you can picture in your mind the inner tank panel fits, uh, fits inside inside this, uh, this part here it actually goes that way round so that goes in there fine but it will not be possible to I haven't put this one in yet it will not be possible to access any screws once that tank's inside because the pump and all the gubbins are in the way. So I think the answer is I'm going to have to blind solder the studs into the bottom of this tank so they can be nutted uh, from under the sole plate. I think that's the answer to that one. Another interesting, which means it's not a problem at this stage, is that there's two uh, screws that are supposed to pass through the sole plate and screw into the uh, to the pre-tapped um, smoke box saddle on the other side. So they've got to pass down through in this direction. But everything fouls this... Uh, keeper plate on the front of the cylinders and the bolts won't pass. Um, I'm not sure what to do about that at this stage. Right, I've got the um, <coughs> sole plate and top works to something assembled on the uh, chassis but the steam pipe sticks proud of the uh, smoke box and can't be shoved back any further and it sticks so far proud that you can't actually properly seat the smoke box door so somehow that's going to have to be squashed it's actually not quite as straightforward as it seems however because potentially you've got to be careful it doesn't fail the bottom of the chimney extension. Anyway, we'll see. 
So I thought this locomotive was finished, all bar bolting on a couple of bits, uh, primarily the steps each side. Oh foolish me. Firstly, um, this is the left hand side of the locomotive because it's upside down. This uh, flange here is clearly going to conflict with the screw that holds the sole plate and hence the boiler and everything down which potentially will need removing for maintenance so there's a conflict there um, and there's a bit of an issue with the captive screw the situation with the rear steps is even worse on this side this is the lubricator side because of course the sandbox uh, has got to just be a push fit over the lubricator and it's quite clear that if the flange to the uh, steps is fixed down where the holes are, potentially they're going to foul the buffer, whereas the buffer moves back. Yeah. So this part is in the way of the movement of the buffer. Once again, I do not believe the manufacturer of this kit ever actually made any. The instructions do make reference to permanently fixing, gluing, soldering the uh, rear bearing support, whatever it's called, steps, um, to the sole plate. But if you do that, you will never get at this screw here, which is one of the six screws that hold the upper works, the sole plate, the boiler, etc, etc, to the chassis. Uh, it comes forth quite neatly behind this flange. Um, what I've decided to do is to make the steps removable, bit of a nuisance, and to do that, I've actually filed a fairly substantial slot here which will enable once the, uh, the lubric once the lubricator is removed you'll be able to get a socket to undo this nut here should that ever become necessary not quite sure why it ever would be but you could do that uh, but you'll certainly be able to get that screw there um, and I've also relieved the end here so that uh, it's come along a little bit, but uh, really there will be no no conflict with the uh, with the buffer when it moves back. So that's how we're going to proceed this side. I've yet to decide whether there are any further issues with the sandbox that fits over the lubricator, but I'll get to that in a minute. If anything, the conflicts with this uh, rear footstep arrangement are even worse on this side of the locomotive. That's the opposite side to the way the uh, lubricator pokes out. So I've had to relieve this bit of the flange here so the buffer can move in and out. I've cut a large slot so using a socket it will be possible to remove that screw should it become necessary. I've had to significantly reduce this flange here so that it doesn't foul that screw but clearly in order to remove the top works the footstep arrangement on both sides is going to have to be removed and that really is to get at the, the screw here to undo the screw there and also to undo the rear screw here if and when you need to take the, uh, the top works off to maintain the boiler or whatever this whole arrangement is in the way of the fixing screws. Not a well thought out design. The instructions cheerfully refer to the fact that these sandboxes need to be vertical. Well, with the casting supplied, the only way that's going to happen, and I don't know whether it's right or wrong, but this casting has to go this side because the other one. If you install that with its holes, ends up at an angle. And by the time you've removed enough metal to make it sit vertically, there'll be nothing left inside. So that's how it's got to be.
There's also an issue not referred to in the instructions at all as to um, how to fit this uh, sandbox which looks as if it's uh, not going to go well again with this uh, with this flange. I could reverse the sandboxes and fit them this way round but there is no pre-drilled hole whatsoever in this location as far as I can tell to screw the sandbox uh, back at that point. I begin to think the best option might be to uh, try and move the steps along and fit the sandbox to the flange whichever way around. I have in no means detailed every problem that I came across and overcame to make this kit for Bob. Uh, in the event, it was really quite difficult to build it because of the various uh, manufacturer, manufacturing errors. Um, the original building instructions, for example, contained 10 pages of corrections and modifications but they don't seem to cover everything I encountered. For me the number of corrections and modifications required to make the build quite honestly is unacceptable and for me spoil any enjoyment in the making of the kit. The completed engine is highly detailed and it is a very pretty uh, little locomotive. But it is, a, it is quite complex, I think, with an axle pump, hand pump and, uh, and the like. Uh, and I think the hand pump, for example, could have been omitted and simply re replaced with an Enoch valve to fill the boiler on the run. I hadn't intended to make a, a video of this build, and I'm sure there will be those who think I'm being a bit too critical or over picky. But as a kit for a supposed starter or beginner, I think the number of uh, alterations required is too great. In some ways, the kit almost res resembles a uh, more of a, a scratch build using preformed etch plates as an aid. The build took me about 30 hours over a four week period, but I think uh, I've got a fair bit of experience and there will be many others who will have to take a lot longer than that.